Our study will take place in John's Gospel, chapter 4. I'm going to read the first four verses of this chapter. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Here we see something very important from the outset. It's what we might call the divine necessity. He must needs go through Samaria. Why was it so necessary for the Lord Jesus to go through Samaria? And why does the scripture record this seemingly insignificant detail? Well, I assure you there's nothing insignificant in the scripture. Listen into these next verses that John records. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Here we find that as the Lord Jesus sent his disciples on into the city to uh, obtain food, that he waits behind. It wasn't by coincidence. It wasn't an accident. He knew that there was a woman there that he needed to point to himself, to show her and to reveal to her that he was indeed the Messiah, the Christ of God, the Christ of Israel. Now, it says that there was a well there, Jacob's well, and we could search the book of Genesis and talk about the history of Jacob and the well that was there. But it's just important for us to note at this point that in the eastern country of that day, and still in many countries today around the world, there is a common well where the people go to draw water. In this case, this woman went to draw water. The significant thing I want you to see here is that when the Lord Jesus approaches her and asks her for a drink, that she says, how do you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan, for a drink? The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. It's probably not too difficult for us to understand, and yet in some ways we're not totally familiar with that situation, but there was an intense uh, animosity, to say the least, between the Jews and the Samaritans in the day of the Lord Jesus. The Jews looked at the Samaritans as being half-breeds. And there was a bigotry that was there. There was a racial hatred, if you will, that was there. But what I want you to notice is this, that the love of the Lord Jesus transcends those social and racial barriers that oftentimes man erects. The Lord Jesus loves all, whether Jew or Gentile, black or white, that little song that we sing with children is so very true. Jesus loves the little children of the world, red and yellow, black, brown, white. The Lord Jesus loves them all. Here we find that the Lord Jesus initiates this conversation by asking her a favor. He says, give me to drink. The woman says, how can you ask me when the Jews don't have any dealings with the Samaritans? The Jews would often bypass and go the long way around to get to where they were going just so they had, wouldn't have to walk through the country of Samaria and the land of the Samaritans. Now when she asked this, and what we find in this chapter is that there is sort of a, uh, this conversation and the Lord Jesus says something and she counters and then the Lord Jesus comes back with his reply. That's done a number of times throughout this chapter. 
Jesus answers in verse 10 and says, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him of him, and he would have given thee living water. What a conversation this is. Here we find that the Lord Jesus mentions first, he says, if you only knew the gift of God. We might call that the provision. If you only knew what it is that God has to offer you. You know, I can relate to what the Lord Jesus says here. If there was some way that I could show you what, what it is that God has to offer you, if you only knew, you know, I mean, I have to be honest that there are times when I've talked with people about spiritual matters, and you literally just wish you could take them and shake them and make them realize and understand, but that's not the way it is. If you only knew what it is that God has to offer you, if you only knew the provision that God has made for you, the Lord Jesus says, and who it is that saith to thee, not just the provision, but the person, Jesus Christ the Lord. He tells this woman, if you knew what it is that uh, the gift of God and who it is that says to you, give me to drink, he says you would have done this, you would have asked. And having asked, he would have given you living water. Oh, the pure grace of it all. God would give to you, he says, living water. Now that sort of uh, piques her attention and gets her interest. It perks her up a bit. And she says, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Here we find that the Lord Jesus says uh, to her that the water that you're talking about, if you drink of that water, you'll get thirsty again. But I'm offering you a water that will make it so that you will never thirst again. The woman notices, she says, you don't have anything to draw from the well. You have no container. You have no pitcher. The well is deep. How will you get water out? She's still thinking on a natural plane, but the Lord Jesus is talking about spiritual truths, spiritual verities. And he tells her, the water you're talking about, if I drink of that, or if anyone drinks of that, they'll thirst again. But I'm offering you a water that can satisfy and slake your thirst forever. Oh, when the woman hears of this, she says, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come I here to draw. Why, it sounded like a great thing. You see, the Lord Jesus offers to her a living water, a water that will satisfy and quench the thirst of this woman forever. Isn't that a wonderful thing that he says to her? The poet has said, I tried the broken sisters, cisterns, Lord, but ah, the waters failed. Even as I stooped to drink, they mocked me as I wailed. Now none but Christ can satisfy, none other name for me. There's love and life and lasting joy, Lord Jesus, found in thee. I want to tell you that the things of this world can never satisfy the thirst that is within man. Man has a vacuum within him. If you don't know Christ, you have a void in your life. You can try to fill that void with sex. You can try to fill that void with popularity, with your job, with your business, with money, with all the things that this world has to offer. But I'll tell you this, 
you'll never feel that aching longing in your life. The things of this world are only temporary, and they can never satisfy you. But the Lord Jesus offers satisfaction, not just for this life, but continual satisfaction. He says, if you'll drink of this water that I have to offer you, it will be not only uh, will it take care of the thirst within you now, but it'll be a well of water springing up into you, into everlasting life. That's what the Lord Jesus offers in this wonderful picture that he gives us of the water of life that he offers to dying, thirsting souls that come to him. Now this woman, when she heard about that, says, that sounds like a great deal. If I, and she's still thinking on the natural level now, you see. Why, if I take of this water you're talking about, I won't have to come back to the well. I won't have to go through all of this work of drawing the water out. And I'll never get thirsty again. And then the Lord Jesus says something that we might first think is rather strange. He says, go call your husband and come here, come hither. The woman answers and says, I have no husband. Jesus says unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. Why is it that this woman, uh, that rather the Lord Jesus, brought this up in the middle of this conversation about water? I think we can see by the next reply that the woman offers. She says, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. You see her thinking begins to be elevated a little bit. Now she's beginning to realize that this is no mere man that she's talking to. This individual knows about her. Not only does he know about her present situation, but he knows about her past as well. He knows that she has had five husbands. He knows that the man that she is living with now is not her husband. Why did the Lord Jesus bring that up? Because it was first necessary for him to point out the fact of her own sinfulness. You see, as I relate to you this wonderful salvation that Jesus Christ brings, and you might like this woman say, oh, that sounds like a great deal. But wait a minute. There's something that you have to realize, and that is the sin in your own life. You must come to Christ and recognize the fact that you are a sinner, that you need to repent, that now no longer will you live your life the way that you have been living it, but that Jesus Christ is going to be truly Lord of your life, and He will be in control. You must be willing to deal with the sin in your life, of course, there's nothing you can do about that sin, but you must come to Christ confessing the fact that you are a sinner and owning yourself as a sinner. Christ will take care of the sin as you believe on Him. She now tries to engage the Lord Jesus in a religious conversation. She says, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. You say that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. But Jesus says, Woman, Believe me, the hour is coming, and now is, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must Worship him in spirit and truth. The woman says, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And listen to these words. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Literally, I am. And upon this his disciples came and marveled that he talked with the woman Yet no man said, Why seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot, and went her way into the city, and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this 
the Christ? You see, that woman left that water pot that she had. She had come to meet the Messiah, the Christ himself, the Christ of God, the one who said, I am. She came to realize that this was not just a mere man. And in another proof of his deity, the Lord Jesus shows that he not only knows about this woman's past, he knows about her present, and he confesses himself to be the Christ of God, the anointed, sent Messiah of God. She left her water pot. Why? Because she had tasted of the living water, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You may have a longing in your life today. I want to tell you that only Christ can satisfy the deepest need of your life. God made you for himself, and you'll have no rest until you rest in him. Confess the fact that you're a sinner. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today. Drink of that fountain of living water that he offers. And in the words of the Lord Jesus, you will never thirst again. But on our program today, we've been allowed to listen in on a conversation that was had some almost 2,000 years ago, a conversation between the Lord Jesus himself and a woman, a woman at a well. Well, when this woman came to understand who Jesus Christ is and something of the gift that he had to offer, she tasted of the living water and she dropped her water pot, went running back to the city, and said, Come, come see a man, a man that told me all things ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Of course, in saying the Christ, she would have had a little bit clearer understanding, perhaps, than many people do today. She obviously understood something about what the Old Testament scriptures had to say about the Christ or the Messiah of who it is that would come and what he would come to do. Through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, we may enter in to the salvation that God has to offer. When we do that, there's a number of things that we must remember. You see, with this woman, even after the Lord Jesus offered her this outstanding deal of being able to drink and never thirst again, she said, this sounds great, I'd like to get in on it. In so many words, that's what she said. But the Lord Jesus first found it necessary to point out the fact that she was living in sin, that the man she was living with at that time was not her husband, and she had had five husbands before. The first thing you must recognize is that you are a sinner. If you will come to God say, saying, yes, God, I'm a sinner, but I believe that your son died on the cross, as a substitute to take my place. I now believe in him and trust him as my savior. You too can drink of that living water and in the words of the Lord Jesus, never thirst again.